Those Were the Days is filmed before a live internet audience. And welcome back to Those Were the Days, the podcast where we took take a look at some classic TV and like your favorite song, see if it still keeps the beat and holds that tune or if it rings a sour note in our ears today. It's a new month, which means a new theme. Now, for some, March is a time of madness. But for us on this here part podcast, March will be a month of music. We're calling it Musical March. As we dive into TV while revolving around music in some kind of way. We're keeping it loose, giving you plenty of rope to figure out what you want to pick. So I'm your host this week, Audie. So I'm kind of like your lead vocalist in a band. And like any good band, it takes more than just me to make some real music. So here's the rest of the band to make the podcasting equivalent of a great album. On the didgeridoo, we have Steven. You know, all kids shows with music in them are pretty great. But not all kids shows should come with a gambling warning like this one. <laughs> On the harpsichord, we have Travis. So I've made this new invention. See, what you do is you put stuff in and then it mixes it all together. So like a blender? Yeah, exactly. Except this one is voice activated, but I'm having a little bit of trouble with the voice activation. See, it, what I wanted to do is when I say, hey, blend, it, it, it blends things together. Um, but so far, all I can do is get it to work when I say every variation of that word possible. Uh, frappe, um, mix. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll take it back to the drawing board. <laughs> nice. And on the maracas, we have Amy. You know, kids these days have gotten soft, what with their kids bop and their edited lyrics. Back in my day, we got songs about uncut American consumerism. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so, this week we're talking about a little show called Kids Incorporated. And like we tend to do, let's see where everyone is when it comes to whether or not you know this tune. So... I think Stephen clued us in last week that he wasn't sure what this show was at all. So, Stephen, what's what's your history with Kids Incorporated? I, I still have no idea about this show. <laughs> uh, no, it's funny. I like. I want to believe I remember it, but so much of TV from this time period looks the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the the eighties. It it had a voice, you know. It, it <laughs> had, had a certain look and appeal. Um, and I want to say I've seen it before, but I don't think we got Disney Channel till 94 when this would have been going off the air. Uh, mm -hmm. so I think I missed Kids in Court, which is w just so unfortunate. I, I didn't get an opportunity to be a part of this, this musical machine that it was. Sure. Amy, what about you? Uh, I grew up without cable, so I definitely did not have it, which is a shame because my sister and I would have absolutely loved this show. Um, I recognized the name when you said it, but I couldn't have, like, not for all the money in the world would I have been able to tell you what it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so this was this was my first viewing. Nice. Travis, how about you? I knew of Kids Incorporated. I may have even seen an episode of Kids Incorporated at a friend's house who had the Disney Channel. We did not. Uh, back then, it was a premium cable channel that mm -hmm. uh, we just couldn't afford. Um, so most of my knowledge of Kids Incorporated was, hey, there was a show called Kids Incorporated. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. That's pretty good. Very cool. So um, I globbed onto this show because it started out syndic in syndication. So, um, hmm. in fact, we'll just start there. It aired in syndication from September 1984 to December of 1985. Somehow, I think that's where I first saw it, because I definitely remember the earlier episodes, the earlier group. Then it was on the Disney Channel from 1986, November of 1986 to January of 1994, with reruns on the Disney Channel running until May of 1996. And we'll get into that 
a little bit more about that later. But the show is about a group of kids slash teenagers in their own band, Kids Incorporated. Um, the show took place mostly in and around where they perform regularly, a music club restaurant for kids called The Palace. Now, it was frustrating that this was all get out doing the research for this because in the show, the A for the first part of Palace is burned out. So everywhere it's written in Wikipedia or anywhere else on the internet, they have P star lace. Perfect. <laughs> and my brain just had trouble dealing with that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I do. Too. Say, I, come on. I did the same thing. I read a little bit, and every time I would read P asterisk lace, my my right eye would twitch. Uh-huh. Just trying to make it a dirty word. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I learning a new word today? What What is happening? P lace yep. was my rap name. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anyway, so throughout the episode, they'd sing on stage, but also anywhere else, kind of like a musical number. Um, the plots around revolved around all kinds of stuff, dealing sometimes with real kid issues and sometimes with ridiculous ones, like meeting a robot or a <laughs> princess, and once a wise cracking bicycle. I had to go look that episode up just to figure <laughs> out what they meant. And there's nothing more to it than it is just a bicycle that talks. Yeah. It's not even like this is a futuristic bicycle that got away from some lab. No, this is just a regular old bicycle that happens to talk. Because. I feel like these are modern, like these are today problems. Meeting yeah, a right. robot or a bicycle that talks and won't mm -hmm. stop. Like, <laughs> yeah. said, I go, yeah, that's a Tuesday. I get that. Yeah, that's I see. Fine. I feel like that was somebody watched Mr. Ed while taking too much cough syrup and then like <laughs> fever dreamed an idea of that. They were yeah. robo tripping. Like, brilliant. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, now the music, it ranged from mostly popular kind of rock adjacent kind of music for the most part from the 60s on up. Um, at some point, each episode had an original song and then five other known songs. This episode we watched only had known songs. So... Um, and original songs were written by the various composers of the show at the time. Um, the vocal responsibilities were shared by all the main cast and sometimes supporting cast. Um, but every main cast member was given a chance to perform a featured solo or song throughout the season. So everybody got a chance to, to be the lead singer some here, some sometime at some point. Um, now, uh, Due to the age of the kids, both making and watching the show, sometimes, sometimes, songs were edited to remove or replace some um, quote unquote objectionable content. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in Jump Around from House of Pain or Hip Hop Array by Naughty by Nature. <laughs> Real quick, I read that. Who thought that was a good idea? Like, we've got this show about kids. You know what? Mm -hmm. let's, let's feature Naughty by Nature. Naughty by Nature was a big hey, have thing you ever, back then. Have well, you I ever know. looked at a Kids Bob album? I was about oh, to say. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Kids Bob is, is they got Rihanna songs got on there, man. Like, it's yeah. intense. Yeah, uh, there's a lot. But Naughty by Nature Because that's was what a, you hear on the on the radio. Yeah. Right. You got to you gotta fair. play yeah. what they hear. And all that had guests back then. You remember all that, the SNL for yeah. children? Yeah. Like, yeah, Naughty by Nature on there. But in the very yeah. next week, they might have God's property. And then you're like, all right, we bounced it out. You mm -hmm. know? Right. Down I do kind of want to... Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I want to find the, the Kids Incorporated episode with House of Pain's Jump Around. Though. Yeah, man. I, I, yeah. I, I so, kind of need to see that. I, I didn't get a chance to look that up, but the Wikipedia list of all the episodes, somebody did God's work and put the songs for every episode in there, so you can find it if you want to. Amazing. God bless the internet um, when it does the right thing. <laughs> and again, sometimes the songs were performed as is, such as Dancing With Myself by Billy Idol, yeah. Wonders by Seven Wonders by Fleetwood Mac, and even Smooth Criminal. Snap. by michael jackson himself um so it was the show was created by gary biller and thomas lynch um lynch would go on to create a whole bunch of kids tv um the most notable one that i remembered and actually knew was the secret world of alex mack 
Oh man, mm. I had the biggest yeah. crush on Larissa Olenek back then. Oh yeah, so we were basically mm-hmm. the same age. I mean, close enough. Yeah, yeah, and she could turn um, into the Capri Sun thing and go under doors. Yeah. And junk. <laughs> Um, cool. But Thomas Lynch did so much of this TV that at some point the New York Times called him the David E. Kelly of tween TV. Who's David E. Kelly? I'll ask because I don't know. He's another guy who's made a lot of television as well. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, Ally McBeal. Ally McBeal. Oh, okay. And yeah, a I lot of that. stuff along those lines. Yeah. Never watched it. Do know of it. So. um, But. Here we get into the making of it. So the original pilot was made in 1983 and shopped around, but no major network would pick it up. Um, But it was distributed by MGM, uh, their TV division, and it ran in syndication from 84 to 85. Um, And because it was syndicated, it was basically up to the local stations as to when it aired. Um, And I think that's when I remember watching it the most on Saturday mornings. Uh, for whatever station we had that carried it. Um, But because of syndication, because it was all over the place, it was canceled in 85. But it ran for reruns on CBN. Yes, the Christian Broadcasting Network. (laughs) That's true. From 85 to 86. And because of that, for whatever reason, 86 is when Disney acquired the rights to the show. I can just see Pat Robertson sitting around going, how do we impact the young people? That's, the, that's what they love to say. <laughs> the young people. We need to bring mm-hmm. the young people in. Because we've only got so much Davy and Goliath we can show the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Adventures in Odyssey just isn't doing the trick anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a whole other thing we could get on. <laughs> um. <laughs> So Disney started producing new episodes in 86 for the Disney Channel. Now, the Disney Channel launched in 83, so it's only three years after the launch of the Disney Channel that they got Kids Incorporated. That seems early to me. I didn't even know it existed until 94, 95. Like, it's wild. So, um... So they had it in 86. They ran original episodes on the Disney Channel through January of 94. And then just reruns until May of 96 and then canceled it there. But, um... That makes it still the longest running show in Disney Channel's history. Are you serious? Even beating even yeah. Stevens? Yep. Wow. Wow. Flash yeah. forward. Even Stevens is not that on that long comparatively. The new Mickey Mouse Club, uh, they brought that back in 89, and that ran original episodes to 94 too. So in that time period, Disney Channel had two shows involving kids and singing and performing. Wow. Huh. They were like a factory. They were pumping out the yeah, future rock stars uh, mm-hmm. that we look forward to. So, speaking of the cast, and I'm focusing on the cast of this episode. So, we start off with Ryan Lambert, who played Ryan, who is our guitar guy. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, just about everybody who worked on uh, the kids who were in Kids Incorporated, whether the singers or background, did some kind of more music oriented type career later. Um, but it was funny with him. He's known more for being in the movie Monster Squad. Oh. Yeah. Than anything else. So, That's what I recognized him from mm-hmm. when I was watching this. I'm like, figured, oh, oh, I've seen him. Mm-hmm. Um, Rashawn Patterson played Rashawn, uh, the uh, token kid of color. Um <laughs> And he's basically hasn't stopped making music since. Like he started as background vocals for all kinds of folks and is just still making his own music. Good for him. Yeah. Um, Renee Sands or Renee Sandstorm played Renee. Um, She was later known for an all female group called Wild Orchid that involved a friend and Stacy Ferguson, who we're about to talk about. So the two of them and another friend who apparently they grew up together formed a girl group after Kids Incorporated. Then we had Martika, or uh, originally known as Marta Marrero, as Gloria. Um, And I feel like she was the one that really, after Kids Incorporated, really hit it hard to make a name for herself in the music industry. And it's been doing stuff ever since. 
She did have a big number one hit in 1989 with a song called Toy Soldiers. Um, if you remember it, good oh, for yeah. you. If you don't remember, it's okay because it was only number one for two weeks, but it was at number one. Hey, it's more number ones than so, I have. Right. Yep. Right. And <laughs> so then two uh, weeks longer than mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and finally, we had Stacy Ferguson as Stacy, who, like I said, went on with Renee Sandstorm to form Wild Orchid. And then after that, went by the stage name Fergie. Oh. And went oh. on to become one of the Black oh. Eyed Peas and yep. then her single career. Oh, nice! Delicious. Yeah, yeah. Flossy, and flossy. She, this was where Fergie started. This or is where Fergie started. Uh huh. Glamorous. I know that stuff. I had. So a it's funny sister. to go back and watch her now and see that that's little Fergie scene. <laughs> Good for um, her. Her and Renee were, I think, just about the longest running cast members on the show. I think they were on there for a good five year run, compared to anybody else. Yeah, um, she's credited as having the most up. Ep- she did like 106 episodes. Mm-hmm. Steady paycheck means a lot when you're 11. Yep. <laughs> means oh, a lot when you're in your 40s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> this episode, we also had uh, Moosey Dreyer as Riley, the uh, operator of the palace. That's his name. Yeah. Um, before Kids Incorporated, he was kind of a mainstay in all kinds of comedy shows. So... Uh, laugh in and everything else of that sort. He's kind of floated around and been one of those guys uh, that helped out here and there. It was an extra comedic person. So there's a chance you've probably, or we've probably seen him and didn't even know it. Mm. Um, one other person in this particular episode who was just barely there, but was frequent in kids incorporated in the background was Mario Lopez. No way. He was yeah, a buddy. dancer mm-hmm. slash drummer. And every once in a while would sing some vocals. Good for you. Yeah. I noticed I noticed him as playing the drums in that last song. Yep. He's he's in the background out of focus, but I'm like, mm-hmm. that looks like a young AC Slater. And sure enough. Sometime I'll is. I'll make you guys watch the Golden Girls episode with little baby Mario Lopez in it. He's still baby he Mario Lopez. Have you seen that yeah, he guy? Is, though, he actually. found some <laughs> I know. magic skin cream. I don't mm-hmm. know what he's doing. Yeah. Um two other Actors, I I thought about mentioning that were uh, mainstays on Kids Incorporated later on. Eric Balfour, um, he's an actor you've seen and stuff. Um, and then also Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh that? Wow! But mm-hmm. when she was much younger and going just by Love, no Jennifer yet. Oh really? So like Love Hewitt or just like one name? My name is Love. She was Love Hewitt. Oh yeah. okay. Just going by Love. Good choice, adding the first name. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and there's been a lot of others here and there, and, you know, people in the background who've gone on to, like I said, anybody who performed on this show in some way, shape, or form usually kept performing throughout the rest of their career. Yeah. So this was a, a pretty good jumping off point for them. Uh, so for this episode, we watched season two, episode 23, Material material girl and again i picked this one because it was like the best version of an episode i could find online um there's plenty on youtube if you want to go find it i think there's a couple youtube channels that have gotten most of the episodes on there and they're recorded straight off the vcr glory (laughs) the tracking Um, lines and everything uh uh-huh absolutely Um, so um this particular one was remastered, I did though. accidentally watch the music video for Material Girl that they did, mm-hmm. um, which was Marie Antoinette, which was excellent. <laughs> yeah, and I was mm. like, "Well, this is phenomenal." Not what I was supposed to watch, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> and that was a funny thing too. I was looking at looking at the songs. So, like, they don't actually do material. It was not yeah. act- right because I was waiting for hmm. the whole episode because I'd already seen that part, and I was like waiting for it to come up, and it never did. And I was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm so confused. <laughs> and look, if there's a fun, popular song from that time period that this show was on, they probably covered it. Yeah. Um. So, again, you can look up the Wikipedia and see all the songs they did. Like I definitely looked up one just because it was there of them doing the never ending story theme. So nice. Oh man. Never seen yeah. that movie. 
I really? Should. Yeah. Travis, book, him. <laughs> <laughs> book it. Taking notes. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, well, then I won't tell. I won't. In the post show, I won't tell my never ending story story that I just saw. You, you can when the... Steven's off the call. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. When um, I leave, you could you do it. <laughs> it's funny. It's like Travis's dog ears perk up anytime. Yeah. <laughs> I try that's, to make, to make sure call. Travis knows mm-hmm. anything I haven't seen because I'm I just like talking to him about movies. So it, <laughs> any yeah. excuse I have is it's there. <laughs> Listen, I need a stable of steady go-to guests. All right, sure, you're in right. that stable, so I need to. <laughs> this is information I need. <laughs> this is the nitty gritty of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a backup. Yep. Yep. All right, so we start the show with the theme song. We're Kids Incorporated, which I have not been able to get out of my head all week. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I told a buddy at work about it <clears throat> today, and he remembered it. <clears throat> and he was like, I'm sorry. He was just like, dang you, it's stuck in my head. I was like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, and it's funny, I was listening through the various versions of it from the different seasons and stuff. And it definitely solidified that I watched these first seasons more than anything because that's the version I know and feels right to me more than anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they open the show like they always do. It always opens with their singing a number on the stage at the palace. And so this one is uh, they're singing Money. That's what I want um, by Barrett Strong and various other people have covered it since then. Uh, so take your pick of your favorite version, but I always fall back on this one. Uh, they've got lots of fake dollars flying around. <laughs> uh, and then we get done singing. And they go off to the side. Uh, Ryan thanks Gloria for helping him with his test. And Renee is apparently selling raffle tickets for a charity of some kind for something. Uh, but it has a five hundred dollar prize package, and lots Let's, of prizes. Right, lots of prizes and five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is a heck of a raffle. Yep, yeah, it is. Because they didn't say how much those raffle tickets were. No, could have been no, expensive tickets. Did you see no. how many they had? She had a bunch. Yeah, fair. And also, what they're talking about this, we we cut to Riley. Again, the operator of the palace. And apparently he's working on a voice-activated toaster. And this feels exceptionally hilarious considering I was listening to the Vergecast today and they were talking about the smart kitchen as it exists (laughs) today and how bad it still is as a thing. And I was like, well, we haven't gotten anywhere then. I, Um, I was shopping when I had to shop for a toaster. Um, I did look at ridiculous ones just to find out about ridiculous ones. And there are ones with like little camera sensors Mm -hmm. that detect the dumbness of whatever you're toasting. And there's like a whole LCD screen. And I was like, and it's only like $500 for a toaster. Yeah. We stayed at an Airbnb over the holidays uh, after Christmas. Uh, with Julia's family, and it had a toaster that had touch capacitive button things, and it was just like, but, 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 but I just want if just Listen, give me a thing to push up and down, please. I mine has a dial, and I can choose English muffin, and that is like wild and wonderful to me. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah. So yeah, the voice activated toaster only works with words that have nothing to do with actually toasting anything. It only Somehow. works with whatever word you've said approximately 45 to 55 seconds after you hit the button. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Somehow. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. Imagine that. Um, so everybody starts talking about uh, what they would do if they would win the prize money and how many tickets they've got. And then we get to Gloria, who only bought one ticket. Um, and she was just doing it for the charity. And she never really thought about winning at all. It's like, okay, we'll just leave it there. Time for your next number. So they get up. Their second number is Gambler, which is a Madonna song. Um, 
And all I could think of while this was going on was Renee's gigantic watch. Did anybody else notice yeah. that? Yeah. I did. I was <laughs> yeah. trying to figure out what that was at first. I'm like, that's a watch. Yeah. That's yeah. like that, the, the screen, display the on that watch. Calculator. Yeah. The display I mean, on that watch been. was bigger than my clock, grow, like my alarm clock mm -hmm. growing up. I was just trying to be like, why does she have an armband on that? No, that's a watch. Holy crap. Kind of. Not going to lie. I kind of want one. Mm -hmm. No, I want my old swatch back. I had a great swatch. <laughs> it was mm. amazing. Um, also got to love the 90s picture in picture uh, effect yeah. they got during the oh, song. Yeah. Um, that was great. Uh, I wrote even a note about that. I was like, this is amazing <laughs> with a little yeah. head in the corner. Yeah. A family uh -huh. picture that, mm -hmm. that you just wish you never made. Yep. That was great. So they finish the song, get off, and they're announcing the raffle winner. And everybody's going through all their tickets. And turns out Gloria wins the raffle. Gloria, who only bought one ticket for charity, never thought about winning. Well, now it's time to rehearse because they've got a charity concert to do. And Gloria's like, well, sorry, I've got to go pick up my prizes. And he leaves. <laughs> And everybody's like, what? And then we get our first commercial break. I did appreciate the commercials left in. For I this was episode. so mm -hmm. happy. I I was like, wait, is this like tied into? Nope, it's just commercials. And I love yeah. them. I love mm -hmm. them so, so much. Good. Anyone the who Skittles captures one? classic TV it made and me... puts on YouTube, just leave it and leave them all in. Mm -hmm. Please. It made me realize how unhinged Skittles commercials have gotten. Dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, here's the flavors, and now it's like, taste the rainbow. <laughs> now, yeah. it, now it's like, oh, your best friend is Skittles now. <laughs> this one, and they also named the flavors, and you notice the green was lime and not like yeah. sour apple or whatever it's yep. been for years. I think they put lime mm -hmm. back. Um, I think they put of, lime back because yeah. they put outrage. apple in one of the other ones. Oh, well, yeah. they've got all the different ones now. Yeah, those mm. are wrong. You just need pure Skittles. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yep. nobody needs yeah. more than Simple. that. And then we get, and then after that was the pound puppies newborns. Dude, I had we a pound puppy. Had those. I had oh, a yeah. pound totally. puppies. Oh, I didn't. We had really. the newborns. You had. Like the I remember newborn. having the little one. So yeah, I got I gum on the bottom of mine, and we could never get it off. So it always had like oh, no. this strip of like pink stuff on the bottom, but yeah, <laughs> you know, it was probably fine. It'd been through the washing machine like 15 times. It wouldn't come off. Oh, sure. So it's sanitary, you know, it's, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. fine. it's just, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so come back from commercial break and, um, you know, we get another bit with Riley and the toaster still not working. <laughs> It's still the same thing going on. Weird word sets it off 45 seconds after the button's been pressed. Whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so strange. Uh huh. So cool. Um, and Gloria is now late for rehearsal. And I love it when uh, Ryan's like, I'm going to give that girl five more minutes. <laughs> Stacey's like, and then what? He's like, gonna give her five more it's just an expression <laughs> yeah <laughs> like he's trying to be hard we're thinking something edgy he's like no nah, I'm, I'm just saying it to say it it reminded me of twin peaks when the mom was like i'm not gonna say it again ah <sighs> yes i am mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty uh <-huh>. much <laughs> so then gloria actually walks in wearing all white white dress and a big white fur coat hey. Floor length oh. fur coat. That is some uh -huh. kind of raffle. Uh -huh. Right? No doubt. That's a yeah. fur. Who are we kidding? Right. That would melt straight to um, your skin if it caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> but I did love when she was like, you know, talking about her prizes and Brian again concerned about it. Was like, was one of yours prizes a watch? Apparently not, because <laughs> you're a half hour late. Oh, that's great. That was very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well written. And then um, there's discussion about rehearsing and stuff. And Glory's like, well, I've got a press conference to get ready for. What what kind of raffle is this? Yeah. Again, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've won raffles. I've not been on television. Well, yeah. no. <laughs> I've not when had a press conference. When you're 13, 14, the local news wanting to talk to you for two minutes is celebrity level. 
Have have you ever been? Were you ever on your local news? I was interviewed by a local news guy, but I didn't make the TV. I was so scared. Mm. Tra- Trav, were you, have you were you ever on the local news? Um, a few times, yeah. What yeah. amazing! Oh yeah, because you because yeah. you were fast. Well, you but also mm-hmm. uh, there was guy. that, and there was also um, was they were doing too. some work outside my like road work outside of where I worked and they decided to interview random people and they just Amazing. stopped in and asked me if they could interview. I'm like, sure, sure. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Tell you anything uh, you want to know. Mm-hmm. It's a small town. There's not that many people to talk to <laughs> is what it turns out. How about you, Adi? Were you ever on local news? Um, I don't remember ever being on local news. I know we've, we had a couple, you know, there was a neighbor whose tree was down, down the street one time i remember being in the not the actual city paper because it was atlanta general constitution i remember being in the county newspaper for our science olympiad team and they got a couple pictures of us putting stuff together that was about it i grew up with um the local meteorologist and a local news anchors kids were in my class Nice. so i was on we we did if you're if you're from new england or in the area, or even if you're not, you may have heard of it, but we had the big dig, which was the giant like reconstruction highway project in Boston. Um, and I was interviewed in middle school because we went in to learn about it. And so I did get on the news to talk about that. Um, and they did finish that project when I was in my mid to late twenties. So, uh, right. <laughs> you know, it was real yeah. good stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. And apparently everything's going to Gloria's head with this press conference, and we get our third number. This time, we this is when it gets into more musical number territory because it's kind of stream of consciousness of what's going on in any given person's head. So Gloria sings, I'm Coming Out uh, by Diana Ross. Um, and Rashawn gets a little play in there and the rest of the cast, and she's just kind of pushing them around and stuff. Um, so anyways, come back to reality. Still wondering about this whole rehearsal thing. Um, and the actual performance. And then Gloria's like, I can't do it tonight. I've got my big interview. And everybody's like, what? But you'll <laughs> miss this concert. She's like, I can't disappoint concert. my fans. fans yeah, your, my- your fans, your the raffle fans. You uh-huh. know? Yeah, right. <laughs> no. This has really gone to her My head really fast. Is. But then they turn it right around on her and then, but you'll disappoint your friends. Oh, but, snap. Wow. That one yep. brought it, brought her back to earth. No, she walks off anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but interesting. Ryan still has faith. She'll be back. I mean, they've been hanging he out. The script. They've been, mm-hmm. <laughs> they've been doing this. Uh, <laughs> They've been doing this for years, you know. This can't mm-hmm. be the first walk off by anybody in the cast. Yep. We get our fourth number, which is another Gloria number. This time, she's singing Hollow Notes' song "Possession Obsession." Um, and she sings it in apparently what is her dressing room with all the prizes and stuff. Um, and I gotta say, it was impressive to see this song with her interacting with the television because this was obviously before they could do anything green screen so they had to get their timing right and they nailed it yeah with this particular one like i was really impressed with that the special effects were great for 1980 whatever <laughs> they right. were on point fit the time right so she sings, then Renee and Stacy come in to to get her, um, to ask her if she's really going to miss the concert. Um, and again, she's all self-absorbed. I'm going to have to do what's important to me. Um, and they still give her guff about it. But she leaves, and then we get our other commercial break in the middle of the show. Which again, was very nice. Rice Krispies. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that, that brought and me a back music Greece. related commercial of Rice Krispies too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, again, back when the characters of cereal were a big deal. 
Yeah, Snap, Crackle, and Pop came out of the box to talk to you about mm-hmm. Rice Cra- Rice Krispies. Yep. And then the tie-in commercial to that was the Hot Wheels. That was uh, so good. Commercial. Yeah, well Kids done. with driving gloves using Hot Wheels was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's but that go. Hot Wheels toy is not in the box. You know that thing is send in a send in a proof of purchase to get it. But you only had to buy shipping. one. You only had yeah. to do one. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's a picture no, on the I box, know. and you're five, and you get home. I was traumatized. So I'm saying, you get home with the box, <laughs> and you're just like, ooh, the toy inside, and it's not in wow. there. Like, I don't even yeah. know nope. if they put toys in boxes anymore. The a holes. Like, we don't even have to. <laughs> I can't go buy a box of corn got, pops. I got a Tony the Tiger thing that holds your spoon. Like you, it sits oh, on your yeah. bowl and holds. I got oh, that I relatively that recently because I do listen to a podcast all about cereal. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, nice. it's real good. I need um, that. Are they getting an uptick with all this cereal talk from the Kellogg's executive lately? I, I, they're a very, it's a very chill, it's a meditative podcast about <laughs> cereal. So they oh, try no, not no. to get too controversial or uh, even <laughs> riled up. Yeah, that's it's a, real good. That's a combination of words if he just needs that it. I've never experienced before. A meditative <laughs> podcast about cereal. It's so good. I love cereal. Learned something new today. Yeah. yeah. The empty I love bowl. being an adult who will happily eat c- cookie crisp if given an opportunity. This is what I'm saying. I'm not allowed mm-hmm. in the cereal. Like, I can't listen to the podcast when I'm at the store. <laughs> um, so it's like, uh, because otherwise I'm like, oh, yeah, let me get that one. Yeah. That's because they're eight dollars a box for anything. It's <laughs> it's right, yeah. like it Malto meal. So here much. I come. Tastes basically <laughs> the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like all those like super like this is the super good for you. No sugar. We no, made no, it no. healthy cereal. Thirteen like, dollars. Right. Yeah. Magic spoon. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. joke. It's thirteen dollars, and it tastes like sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> I will say yeah. the the uh, panda puffs are not half bad, but they are pricey. No, no, no those are pretty good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like their waffles. Mm-hmm. They know Whatever what's up. Nice. There's a koala one too that's not half. Yeah, bad. that's the one koala waffles. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Mm-hmm. They're good. <laughs> then Welcome to our podcast about cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Back it up. Beep beep. beep. <laughs> we will talk about old ads at some point. Mm-hmm. Oh, that will be oh, a thing. for sure. And we will play yeah. them because. It will be great. Mm-hmm. Yep. So back to the show. Uh, they're about to have to go on stage, and apparently Gloria's nowhere. Oh, wait, Gloria's back. Uh, and she's back to a quote-unquote normal outfit. Still it seeing... did look like pajamas, but... Yeah, Here it's the are. 80s. I mean, that's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the white and the fur as much this time. Um, and she just... Uh, Basically says, yeah, uh, I guess the winnings went to my head. Yeah. As if anybody's in disagreement at all with that. Um, <laughs> they're like, but wait, weren't you supposed to do your interview? Wait, didn't I just see you? She's like, yeah. Uh, when I told them about the concert and everything, they said we could just tape it. And I talked up everything. Um, and they're like, ooh, okay, cool. What about your prizes? She's like, I gave them away. You gave them away? Yeah, they weren't that important. Not like my friends. Yeah, I feel uh, like there's a middle ground though. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like you, mm-hmm. you can have prizes and not and be friends. a jerk to your friends. Yeah, you right. Have to give them all. Those away. are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then one more time, we check in with Riley and his toasters. Like, yeah, didn't work. But I got a whole bunch of toast. So. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna yeah, serve that. You know. I would call mm-hmm. the health we're, department. We're not gonna. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna need toast for a while. Look at this. You've you've misunderstood toast. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this is not how toast works. <laughs> if, mm-hmm. if that's how it works, I'll just go ahead and toast all my toast right away when I buy the loaf and just keep it yeah. later. That's terrible. Right. right. That's not that's mm-hmm. not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Dumped I'm it all over the counter too, out of like a burlap sack. Like that's not yeah. <laughs> no wonder you're running an establishment <laughs> for children. <Yeah>. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can't hack it with grown ups. No, right. would not, that would not be okay for her. <laughs> kids will eat anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and be able to survive that too. Like, oh, yeah, they would make it. It'd be fine. And so the band goes on to do their charity concert number. 
we get our final number of the episode no more words by berlin um and then that's pretty much how they end the episode we get one more uh commercial break for the next kids incorporated which kind of wanted to just watch i kind of wanted wanted to watch watch it it. because it was Uh careless whisper what Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. careless whisper (laughs) I just saw noir stuff and detective business, and I was yeah. sold. Like, I mean, I was in dude. for that, and then it was Careless, Careless Whisper, Whisper, and I was like, I can't. What is mm-hmm. happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me in. And then we got a, a, you know, we got a Sears ad, which was uh, back then. Apparently, you could get away with just putting a picture and having audio that's on all you TV. Need. Yeah, that's it's all you Sears. Need. You already know what it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. They were that big of a deal that you didn't even need to really try. When I was growing up, I, I was told it was like this thing that like when you turn 18, get a Sears credit card because then you can build your credit mm-hmm. and then no matter what you need, you can get it at Sears. Man. You know yeah, what I mean? You need car yeah. parts. You need a prom dress, whatever you need, mm-hmm. you can get it at Sears. And so really that could. was like, that was the thing growing up. Lawnmower, yeah. like, computer, hey, just get the Sears. Yeah. TV, pair of pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. And there was like yeah, so in fun. Atlanta, there was a huge Sears Roarbuck uh store and distribution center. So we definitely do oh, we nice. could get it if Dude. we had it. Oh yeah. If we wanted it. Sears could Not have been Sears. anything it wanted to be. It just didn't it had a breadth, but it didn't do any of it very well. That was the Sears problem. Like mm-hmm. you you can it's like, oh we got all the fridges. They had craftsmen. And I loved craftsmen. Craftsman yeah. is my tool of choice. Uh, yeah. These days, it, I gotta go Lowe's to get I mean, it though. Yeah, it was around for a long time. Oh, it for was. Really I was gonna say, like, it's still hung on for a while. Yeah, but they could have been competitive with everything else that's happened, and they just they were just like, ah, anybody mm-hmm. that fights the wave like, is destined tired. to lose. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a uh, small town close to Augusta we lived at several years ago. It had a Sears, and that Sears was like in the corner of a shopping center and it was just the um appliance part yeah yeah mm. like, oh yeah all. i remember that so. we had one of those just it was like there's the main sears and then there's this weird yeah. alcove on the other end of the mm-hmm. mall that's where you get the washing machine from because they yeah. had a loading dock <laughs> for your pickup yeah right yeah <laughs> just back there up over go. here ted we'll throw it on there for you so you got help at home. Bubble Yum commercial after the Sears commercial, which was more of a real one with people doing stuff, chewing gum. <laughs> chewing uh, gum. And then, uh, then the Bonkers Candy commercial. Bonkers oh, Candy. That was a mm. oh, That was a that made me want yeah. Bonkers big time. They don't yeah. even have anything like, like Bonkers. Like the closest thing I can think of is maybe High Chews are kind of close sure. to what a bonkers was like. Maybe. Maybe. Kind of, but, yeah. but also not. Right. It's not close enough, but it's there. <laughs> You're looking for that yeah. texture, and you just can't find it. They must have outlawed mm-hmm. the chemicals they used to make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why none of us are doing very well. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we what is it with these chemicals. What is it with these millennials and their rate of death? <laughs> not okay. No, they're not fine. No. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then we just get the credits, and that was the end of the episode. So that was our episode of Kids Incorporated. <laughs> Don't you love when credits are the only thing after the final commercial break? Like, there's yeah. not even uh-huh. a closer. Mm-hmm. It's just straight to credits. Yep. What are we even doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to hear that song again. Yeah. Not only did we have commercials back in the day, we had a commercial before the credits. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Take that, kids. You don't know mm-hmm. what it was like. So, all right. So, what everybody thinks, Stephen? What'd you think, of Kids Incorporated? Oh man, I this show. Uh, I needed to have seen it when I was seven to have <laughs> a relationship with it today, because it did a lot of things that just grind my gears. Uh, one of those things <laughs> is the children not having a darn clue how to play an instrument was really crushing. Oh, yeah. me. Uh, watching dude flail with a guitar like he was doing a Van Halen solo at one point where there was nothing even remotely close to a solo in the audio track was mm-hmm. not okay for me. Um, <laughs> Ryan, uh, Ryan Lambert looked off, looked at the camera at least five times uh, throughout the show, like a real quick, like, whoo, 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 and that drove me mm-hmm. nuts. I was like, got him. 
Uh, and then <laughs> I couldn't get out of my head. You know, when you're performing on a on a stage and you got to be like, I'm having the best time ever. I always know that they don't. They rarely have like actual loud music playing for these kids. It's going to be like some overplayed, yeah. and they have to lip sync or even sometimes flip in silent. Uh, so they can all mm-hmm. th- like because you don't want to mess up the sound and other people are speaking and stuff. This was probably lip synced with a track, but I was just probably. imagining these people dancing around in the silence. I just met, <laughs> I, I just meted myself out of being able to enjoy it as much as I should have, and I feel bad about it. I've enjoyed talking about it a lot, uh, but yeah. but I think I'll uh, I'll leave this on the Disney Channel in 1994. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah amy what about you um yeah i like let me tell you 80s me would and my sister this would have been absolutely 100 percent our jam and we would have like this would have been appointment television <laughs> and i gotta tell you i might go find out about what that careless whisper episode is about because <laughs> i cannot comprehend this it's too much yeah i have there's like i have like four like i i have this weird love for that song like there's like like notably two really good covers of it that I just adore. And I just, I'm going to have to go find out what that is, but otherwise, (laughs) otherwise it's uh yeah. Nine year old me would have loved it, but Mm -hmm. yeah, it was good though. I was, I was impressed. Yeah. Travis, how about you? So leading into this, I knew that uh, the show existed and now I can say I have watched it. Um, <laughs> that's about where I can get to with mm-hmm. it. It wasn't bad. It was it was well done. Yeah, the yeah, kids yeah. could sing. That was sure. all great. Uh, I probably would have enjoyed this at the time because it it fits into like at that time that this was airing would have been when I was watching things like you can't do that on television. Yeah. Um, in this same era, and so I would have dug that. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it can stay there. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm perfectly okay with that. I did not bring this intending to turn everybody into Kids Incorporated Conrads and be like, <laughs> you know, I need to watch this. I need to to do this. No, we're just glad Steven's watching Next Generation, and that's good enough for um, us. Just that's right. all we all ask. I am just yep. having the time of my life, y'all. Yay. <laughs> um, did we get any feedback on this at all from anybody? Oh I yeah. Didn't see any. Well, you brought got... up the emails, uh, and I was t- I totally had that prepared uh, to see if there's no. We didn't. We didn't. <laughs> Nothing in the email. All right. Good. I got <laughs> one buddy on Threads talking about how uh, Corey Scott he leaned more towards kid video, mm. but yes, this too. Um, kid video was kind of a. Uh, think captain in the game master but instead of playing games they were playing music but it was kids oh, sucked okay. into oh. an animated world and oh, oh captain in the music ga- and oh, captain in the game master that was a great show mm-hmm. I'll, all three episodes that i ever watched but i mean I, <laughs> it's the mm-hmm. show that inspired me to wrap my uh my orange nintendo pistol around my leg so i can go out and shoot stuff oh yeah yeah everybody <laughs> wanted to use the zapper like that mm-hmm. thank you Oh. Captain in. Well, look, if you do have any feedback about this or upcoming topics, be sure to send it our way on Twitter. We're at Those Day Show. Uh, email, you can hit us up at Those Were the Day Show at gmail.com or hop onto the Two Dorks Discord. Uh, let us know what you think of what we're going to be watching next week, which I believe is Steven's pick. Yes, it is my pick. And I had. Such a hard time with this. Uh, two shows I was going to do, you can't find anywhere. Uh, so I was like, ah, one of which I knew I was going to try because I thought this show was a show that I knew when I was a kid. Uh, and it, well, you know, maybe they'll start streaming one day. I won't spoil it right now. You're just going to have to, you mm. know, what? tweet at me. Tweet at those were the day show. But anyway, I had a couple. I'll tell <laughs> you guys later. Uh, but the, this, the, what we ended up with is a little show you may have heard of. Called The Simpsons. Uh, the familiar. Simpsons had a episode, season eight, episode thirteen, called "Simpson Califragilistic Uh where they're visited by a nanny named Sherry Bobbins, and apparently uh-huh. there's music that happens, <laughs> and I've never seen it. 
Uh, and I'm pretty excited about going to the little town of Springfield somewhere in the USA. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's next week. The Simpsons Season 8, Episode 13. I'm not going to say that long title again, but you get it. It's in the show notes. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yep. All Streaming right. on uh, Disney Plus. I'm pretty sure it's on Disney Plus. If it's not, I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. Awesome. Ooh. So. Oh, by the way, uh, Bonkers Candy was brought back at one point for a little bit. Apparently, it got re-discontinued because um, I cannot seem to find it anywhere but on the Leaf Brands website as coming soon, but it does say 2015, so <laughs> I don't I don't think probably because it probably wasn't as good without the bad chemical. Yeah. yeah, I mean, probably. If you don't have mm-hmm. Red 40 in there, what are we even doing? Yeah, what, what are we yeah. trying for? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Well... <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for those of you joining us live in the ch- chat. Uh, you can always come hang out with us. We record uh, every Monday around 9-ish p.m. Eastern time at uh, twitch.tv slash twodorkstv. Uh, come hang out like J.F. Dubo and others that frequent uh, the chat room with us. Um, the podcast comes out later on in the week in your favorite podcatcher of choice. Um, if you're listening to it, you already know that. So feel free to share it around. Let other people know. Yeah. Uh, share the joy that is talking about classic TV. So until next week in our episode of The Simpsons, for Steven, for Amy, for Travis, I'm Audie, and you've been listening to Those Were the Days. See you, everybody. Thank you.